So let's take a look at the anatomy of an Azure policy definition file. Probably not gonna be in your exam, but I think it's a really good practice just to open these up and see what they look like. Uh, so on the right-hand side, we have an Azure policy definition file and we'll just walk our way through it. So the first thing you're gonna have is the display name. That's gonna describe what the policy is for. Uh, then you're gonna have a, a certain type and we have built-in, custom, and static. So built-in means that it's maintained by Microsoft. Then there's custom, whether it's created by you, and then static, where it's, my, it's owned by Microsoft, but it's for a regulatory compliance, so maybe HIPAA or FedRAMP or something like that. Then you have the description, so that's gonna elaborate on the actual policy itself, but generally the, the display names are pretty darn robust. Uh, then you have metadata, and this is just gonna be optional data uh, uh, that you can provide. So if you look down below in the parameters, we have some metadata explaining what that parameter is. Then you have the mode. Uh, and so the mode is determined by the type of resource it is. And so it can either be a resource provider or an Azure resource or Azure Resource Manager. For the case of the Resource Manager, it's gonna either be all or index. And so for all, that's gonna basically select everything like resource groups, subscriptions, and all resource types. And for index, it's only gonna be resource types that support tags and locations. For resource provider, it's a very limited list. And so we have the Microsoft Container Service.data, which is now uh, uh, generally not used. And then you have Kubernetes data and uh, Key Vault data, okay? And then just moving on uh, a bit further here, I just wanna go into parameters. So for parameters, these are values you can pass into the policy to allow the policy to be more flexible. And so here we are just defining the parameter. So we have the name of the parameter, uh, the, the type, so string, array, object, boolean, integer, float, or et cetera. You'll notice that there's no name on that parameter, which is totally fine. Uh, and then you have uh, the metadata actually follows a particular structure. So you have description, display name, strong type, assign permissions. You have the default value, uh, which you don't necessarily have to set. You have the allowed value. Uh, and then when you want to reference a parameter, you're gonna use this field and in. So you say field location in, and there you can see that we're using uh, a function, which is very similar to the ARM templates. And then over there, you can just see that it's over there, how it's referencing it. Uh, and then just the last thing here, I just wanna talk about uh, policy rule. So this consists of an if and then block. So in the if block, you define one or more conditions that specify when the policy is enforced. And you can apply logical operators to these conditions to precisely define the scenario for a policy. So here you have the if, and if the if is met, then make that thing happen. So there you can see on the policy rule, if it says, if you have a type of virtual machines, then you want the effect and you'll pull in the effect parameter. Uh, and then what it's going to do is it's going to check for the status code and make sure whether it's healthy or not. And so that's basically how they work. Uh, and just one more thing, let's just talk about the policy rule a little bit more about the policy effect. So we have that if and then statement, we'll just talk about what we can do there. So deny is uh, whether the resource has creation update uh, fail due to policy, audit, so create a warning event in the activity log when evaluating a non-compliance resource, but it doesn't stop the request, append, add additional parameter fields to the requested resource during the creation or update. A common example is adding tags on resources such as cost center or specifying allowed IPs for uh, storage resources. Uh, then you have an audit if not exists, create a warning event in the activity log when evaluating a compliance resource, but it doesn't stop the request. Deploy if not exists, so execute a template deployment when a specific condition is met. For example, if SQL encryption is enabled on a database, then it can run a template after the DB is created to specify a, a way. And the last one here is disabled, so the policy rule is ignored, often used for testing. The reason I'm just showing you this last one here is I just wanna show you what action is taken uh, uh, based on the policy, okay? Uh, and again, probably not gonna be in your exam, but it's something I want you to know so you understand what a policy can actually do. And this is basically the last one I really want you to know, okay?